Hey everybody, it is Friday, June 5th, 2020, Flashback Friday, casual Flashback Friday, but every day is casual here on the Herbie J. Pilato channel on YouTube. And if you haven't yet, subscribe, subscribe. And if you end up liking this video, which I'm going to be talking about today, which will be Star Trek, please do like it. And if not, okay, well, say living maybe tomorrow. In the meantime, yeah, let's get right to it. Star Trek. So many different um, components of this amazing franchise, which began in 1966 on TV um, with the original series starring William Shatner as Captain Kirk, Leonard Nimoy, Nimoy as Mr. Spock, DeForest Kelly, um, is Dr. McCoy and just a, a host of amazing um, actors, George Takei, and, uh, George Takei, uh, uh, Michelle Nichols, James Doohan, Walter Koenig, on and on and on, Grace Lee Whitney, Majel Barrett, who was married to series creator Gene Roddenberry. Man. I mean, it went from the original series to the next generation, to Deep Space Nine, um, to Voyager, to Enterprise, Discovery, Picard, and now coming up, Strange New Worlds. That's that's the title of or Strange New World. Yeah, Strange New Worlds. That's the title of the new show. Okay, and then of course the movies and the reboots and the animated series and so I'm going to try and cover all of that or at least my thoughts on all of that and where they fit into each other in this video which is probably going to be the longest video I've ever done so bear with me on that um, I kind of try to keep my videos under at least five minutes but this is not going to happen okay it's going to go way beyond that all right it already hit okay one of the reasons why I think, and this is really going to be my opinion, all of this on Herbie J. Pilato channel and beyond is usually my opinion. Um, but one of the reasons I think Star Trek, the original series, was so tremendous is it, you know, appeared and debuted in an era when turmoil, the 1960s. I mean, so many different shows in the 1960s, uh, where escapism, entertainment, certainly Twilight Zone and Bewitched and I Dream of Genie, The Munsters, The Addams Family, Lost in Space, uh, I mean, on and on and on and on. And I think we really, we, we missed uh, the boat when we cut all that off in, in the 1970s, but that's for a whole other video. Star Trek was represented so much. It represented a hope for the future. Uh, combined cultures on one united uh, starship that represented Earth traveling to strange new worlds um, and to explore and not to, you know, disrupt the development of certain um, peoples. Uh, or, or, or cultures on those different planets, but to explore, to learn, to share, to unite the entire universe. I mean, just wonderful, right? Gene Roddenberry's dream. Okay, the first season, excellent. Second season, terrific. Third season, of course, a lot of people feel, and I'm one of them, had issues. Okay, so never was really a rating tit. NBC cancels it. Hello. Um, they try to bring it back. Letter campaign. Uh, you know, saved it a, a once, I believe, in that final season. But, you know, it's network television. A lot of issues there. So it ended. Came back as an animated series for two seasons, which is really just very small seasons. But every And the original cast returned with voices. It was just amazing. And... Star Trek the Animated Series became one of, if not remains, one of the best 
Saturday morning shows ever. Uh, certainly better than a lot of live programming that was on prime time, even um, in that era, which was 73, 74. Um, and many people feel that because it ran, the animated series ran two seasons, that it was allowed to then continue the aborted five-year mission that stopped with three seasons on the live show and it continued on for for two seasons um, on the animated series. Great. Okay, so that ended. And then it was like, okay, we want Star Trek, we want Star Trek, we want Star Trek. Right, let me be clear on something. There are Trekkers, and the Trekkers are the ones of fans who are very concerned with the philosophy of the show, what it all means. Now, this is my breakdown, and I read it on, uh, you know, all through the years in various research too, but it's essentially my take on it. Trekkies, you know, we, they wear the costumes, and that's okay, and the ears, and all that. As a matter of fact, I was going to put my black t-shirt on underneath this with my with an emblem, and I was like, that'd be a little much. So I'm just subtly representing Captain Kirk here with the uh, the yellow gold. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, so the animated series had, a, so we had <laughs> Trekkers and Trekkies. All right, Trekkies, uh, everybody loved this show. Trekkies were the, the, you know, again, the ears, and we loved, oh, yeah, great Star Trek. And Trekkers are the more sophisticated fans. And that's how I look at it. And yes, I'd like to think that I'm one of the more sophisticated fans. All right. So after the animated series, nothing. Show ended. Franchise dead. There was talk in like 77-ish of bringing the show back on TV and syndicated in a syndicated platform. Forget NBC, forget the major networks. Syndicated. It's going to be called Star Trek Phase 2. William Shatner was aboard. Leonard Nimoy was not. Everybody else except Leonard was pretty much aboard. So they're moving forward on this. And then something called Star Wars came along in the movies. And Paramount's like, hey, wait a minute. We've got Star Trek. We're making a TV show. Let's turn it. Let's make it a movie franchise instead. Or let's do it a, a, a movie. So Star Trek, the motion picture, which debuts in 1979, is born with Leonard Nimoy, who was intrigued with the idea of making a feature film as opposed to just making a new series on TV. Well, the movie was a tremendous, noble try, but it was way too long and it was way too talky and it was just plain boring. Come on, space it. It was boring. It was wonderful to see everybody on the screen again. And at this point, I'd like to stop and do my um, imitation of, of Captain Kirk seeing Spock for the first time um, <clears throat> on that bridge in Star Trek The Motion Picture. Give me a minute to prepare. Okay, so he sees Spock for the first time in a long time, and we all love seeing them, everybody, on the big screen. It does okay, but, you know, it makes a little money, I think, but it costs a lot more money, and Paramount ultimately is not really pleased. So, they still want to continue the franchise, so they, they go to Harv Bennett, TV producer, great Harv Bennett. He did the Mod Squad, Six Million Dollar Man, yeah, which, by the way, he saved, and we'll talk about that in another uh, video about Bionics. But Harv Bennett essentially saved the Star Trek franchise. He took his production team, and he went to Paramount with the TV division of Paramount, took it away from God bless Robert Wise, who directed Star Trek The Motion Picture. Uh, but it didn't have the intimacy of what we all loved about the original series. So, um, so um, Harv Bennett brings Star Trek to the TV production end of, of, of Paramount and uses the TV people 
a lot of the TV production end of Paramount to make the feature films, and we come up with Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Harv actually goes back and watches all of the original episodes of Star Trek, the original series, and he notices this really intriguing relationship between Kirk and Khan, played by Ricardo Montalban. He says, hey, in an episode called Spacey, he goes, hey, there's something there. So he takes that and he makes Star Trek II, gets the fantastic Nicholas Meyer to direct it, and it becomes a huge, huge hit. Fantastic. Okay. Ricardo Montalban returns. The only thing is, you know, and Walter Koenig, who was played Chekhov, played Chekhov on the original series, he's in Star Trek II, of course, the movie, uh, uh, The Wrath of Khan, but he's, he's the one who notices Khan or notices that um, the ship that they discover on Celti, I mean, whatever, that planet, where Kirk had um, essentially abandoned or um, sent Khan. You got to watch the episodes. Can't get, or else this, this video will go 45 minutes. So anyway, long story short, um, Chekhov is the first to notice that Khan is alive on his ship, Botany Bay. On his ship. Hello, Botany Bay. But uh, Chekhov wasn't in the original series or the first season of, of the Space Seed episode of the first season of the original series. Chekhov came along in the second season. So how could he recognize? So there's that thing. You know, that's a little tidbit. Anyway, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan is saved. It saves, it saves the franchise. And as everybody knows, Spock dies at the end. No spoiler there. It's been over 30 years, right? Get over it. Okay, so the second movie, or the, the third film, Star Trek III, this, the um, search for Spock, the only reason Leonard Nimoy is going to come back to do it is if he directs it. Well, Leonard is a wonderful, was a wonderful actor, but I don't think he was such a wonderful director. Okay, um, I think he was flawed as a director. He, was, he wasn't a bad director, but he was just a better actor, and the pacing was off of Star Trek III, in my opinion. And... It took too long to find Spock. They should have they shouldn't have called it the search for Spock. They should have just found him in the first 10 minutes, called the movie something else, and gone on with a new story. Okay, Star, Star Trek IV came along, The Voyage Home, which was now directed by, uh, I think, William Shatner. And he was also, um, William Shatner is one of my favorite actors ever. He's my favorite Star Trek actor. But again, like Nimoy, I think he was not, the greatest director. I think he's a great actor. Um, and then, you know, after that, there were the, the, what was it? Star Trek, oh, The Undiscovered Country, which they brought, yes, Nicholas Meyer back as the director. And it was almost very similar in, in some ways to the pacing of Star Trek II, and it was another hit. So then in the midst of all of that, we've got Star Trek The Next Generation, which is now back on TV in, syndicate, in a new syndicated platform for, uh, for Paramount. It's just wonderful. Picard, great. Riker, wonderful. Uh, just, just tremendous band of new actors, the Gene Roddenberry cast. Um, and the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation, love it. Okay. After that, Talk, 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 okay? What they tried to fix in the next generation that many felt was missing from the original TV series was this. The original series, an A list or an A, the A story was the Enterprise going somewhere, exploring new worlds. Hello. Okay? And maybe they would sometimes have episodes focused on the characterizations, which was usually the B story. That shifted with Star Trek The Next Generation. The A story became the character story, and the B story became, you know, going to Strange New Worlds. Well, no. <laughs> no, you want... Um, adventure and 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 imagination and ex these i want to see new worlds with star trek that's why the, the the original series was so great they went explored we saw these amazing new peoples not these arcs 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 
arcs. Nobody wants the arc stories. Just keep the episode adventurous, self-contained, beginning, middle, and end. Make it colorful, imaginative. All of that is, me. in my opinion now, missing from the next generation. Good show. Loved it. But in my opinion, the first season, which a lot of people don't like at all, of the next generation is the is what is my favorite because it's the closest as to how they used to do the original series with the a story being adventure the b story being character um deep space nine came along fantastic you know as cisco is an Af the first african-american uh a captain terrific love it um but it was boring it got better however as the show continued. And Deep Space Nine became one of my favorites of the Star Trek TV shows. But at the same time, as it continued and became better, I'm like, okay, well, this is a very nice sci-fi series, but it's not Star Trek. It's not Star Trek. <laughs> Sorry. Star Trek is about exploring, not the space station. No. Star Trek is a zoom. Star Trek is and you had that humming sound in a lot of the new shows in the back which kind of just the tone where you watch the original series you know kirk is you know going all over the place and spock's got the it's exciting so when star trek the next generation started to make the films they tried to be adventurous but there was no stories. There was no exploring of the amazing new civilizations. Where was the imagination? Okay, the Borg, okay, the Borg, okay. Do the Borg thing and move on. Do the Klingon thing and move on, okay? Do the Romulan thing, move on. Create a new race. Um. So then everything, oh, so we got, what do you got? Voyager, okay, Voyager was okay. Great female captain, love Janeway too, okay, terrific, but. No adventure, they tried, the, the pilot of Voyager is terrific. The pilot of Next Generation, terrific. Okay, but Voyager didn't do it for me either, ultimately. Enterprise, I don't know what that was. I'm sorry, I don't even know what that was. I watched it, I'm like, what? What? So everything is so dark. It started to get dark and misty. And you know, also too, around this time, you know, the original series was filmed. The original TV show was filmed. With The Next Generation, they started to film it and then in that era all of television started to film and then transfer things to videotape and it had a different look by the time the other series came along it just was had that videotape-ish look film things they did that with the wonder years too they filmed it and transferred it to videotape oh man if they just would have left it alone and filmed it but that's the way television evolved in general i digress um so then they rebooted the Star Trek franchise, feature, feature film franchise, with, you know, J.J. Abrams and all that. And uh, in 2009, it came back to the big screen. All new cast. Very, very good film. Um, great. You know, Leonard Nimoy came back, made the cameo. But then they, they started the, the rift or the drift or the whatever where it was a different timeline and something happened where Spock changed everything. I don't know. And so they made it okay for things to be different. Whether it was about the legalities of Paramount and Star Trek and CBS and all that dividing up. I, it's it's mind-boggling. Just do Star Trek. Work your things out behind the scenes and just give the fans what they wanted. And here's the crazy thing. All true Trekkers ever wanted Okay, Trekkers and Trekkies, really, was Kirk, Spock, and McCoy in the original cast back on TV. 
in those roles. William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, DeForest Kelly, back on TV. We never got that. We got everything but. We got him in the movies with a different cast. We got him in the movies with the, the same cast. We got him on TV in sequels with different casts. But we never got the original cast back playing the original roles in a TV series where everybody fell in love with them. We got everything but. So now comes, here we are in the 21st century, and we've got Discovery. We've got Picard. We've got, hopefully, Strange New Worlds. Maybe this series, this Strange New World series, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, which will be on whatever streaming access, CBS, Paramount, Viacom, whatever-ish works out. If they go back to the original series, which they're claiming they want to be, to, to, to explore strange new worlds. Hello, that's from the narration of the original show. I said hello three times, I know. And, um, and, and, ex and discover new worlds. Let's discover it. It's Kirk again. Um, or Shatner doing Kirk. Herbie doing Shatner doing Kirk. If that holds true, if they make the A story the adventure story and the B story the character story and not talk us to death like pretty much all the other shows are done, there's hope for Star Trek to continue on TV in the way it should always have been. And if they, they were smart, they'd work out getting William Shatner somehow, or Koenig, Walter Koenig, George Takei, and Michelle Nichols back on TV somehow in a cameo in Strange New Worlds where, you know, they're gonna continue or they're going to go back to before Kirk came aboard. So somehow, I mean, it's science fiction. They could work it out. But just stick the original storyline or the original timeline and be adventurous. One, exploration. Two, character study. Don't overdo it, okay? Because that's what killed all the other shows, in my opinion. If you liked this video, and I'm sure so many of you Star Trek people are going to love it, hit like on um, underneath here and subscribe to the Herbie J. Pilato channel where I talk about a whole bunch of other things. And by the way, I profile William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy in my Dashing, Daring, and Debonair book right there, which can be purchased on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. I also cover on Nichelle Nichols in my Glamour Gidgets and the Girl Next Door book, along with many other uh, classic TV uh, females and male stars of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And they can all, all along with all of my books, can be purchased on Amazon.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it, if anything, this video. And I will see you soon. Peace, stay safe, be well.